Welcome to Team G503. I'm Scott Schiller, your host, and I wish y'all would just quit grilling me. No, seriously, I, I know it's not punny, Scott. Introduction to the next series of little videos I'm going to do here. It's going to be all strictly on the iconic, fabulous, fantastic Jeep grill that we love. I took the 1943 apart. We've got the grill. I figured I'd do a short little series, maybe two, three parts. First, we'll strip it all, maybe do some, some work to it, some of the repairs that need to be done to it, and then we'll prime and paint it, and we'll install some of the accessories that go with it, like the welting that goes from the hood to the top of the grill and the welting that goes on the sides to the radiator. In this video, we'll be prepping this 1943 Willis MB grill. You zoom in close here. Take a good look and you can see some of the paint. You've got your cracks and your runs where someone's touched it up and where they've painted over stuff that wasn't quite prepped right. You've got this corner here that's mashed in a little bit. Grill's in good shape. It's not all bent up and rusted. That's a good thing. We'll flip it over and take a look at the back. Got the welting that goes from the top of the grill to where the hood meets. You see the rivets. And we've got the welting, some of it left, that goes to the radiator shroud. And this is all stapled in on the side here of the grill. You get in here close, you can see it. This is so old you can just tear it right off there. But the staples is going to be an issue we're going to be looking at in this video. Have all kind of peeling paint that you can see on the back side here. There's the back side of the staples. Working outside this morning because it's absolutely gorgeous and cool. And uh, what we'll be doing later, I'm going to want to be outside. So this weld thing is so bad that I'm just going to go ahead and tear it off. But I want to show you quick how to take these staples out. It's really, really simple. I've just got a pair of needle nose pliers and an awl. Some guys and folks like to use a uh, small screwdriver, but the awl seems to work good for me. Just get in here, kind of gently pry up on the, on the staple. Some are tight, you just gotta kinda work at it. This is, it's not, it's not fun, but it has to be done. Once I get them started, just get in here with the needle nose. Get them straight. These are all. And try not to bend that metal, you kinda just kinda work it out, and wiggle it out. Patience is a virtue. And I always keep a, a scrap bucket handy. I like to throw those right in the scrap bucket. Don't want them all on the floor, or in this case, outside on a, on a drop cloth so I can step on them. I'm just going to work my way around the whole perimeter of the grill and take them all out. It'll take a minute. The rivets for the grill to hood welting are a little bit different. They're a little bit heavier. They're actually rivets, not staples. And they're a little bit more difficult to get out for two reasons. They're heavier gauge for starters. But they're also located behind that little lip, which makes them a little bit difficult to get out. Let's see if we can't pull one of these. Same little theory. Just get behind there and see if you can't get it started. Take our needle nose. Straighten that right out. And we'll come around and out comes the rivet. We just systematically go around the top. And like I say, the ones that are up top on the gr uh, grill behind the lip there, they're a little bit more difficult to get at, but with some effort, you can do it. I imagine with some patience, you could reuse those. Those look brass. The ones that come in the new kit are black. And I believe they're steel. It's a little something interesting. I bet you could go through and straighten that back out and reuse that if you really wanted to. So now we've got all the staples out from the side where the welting to the radiator goes. You can see the original holes. And that's going to be important when we go back and put the new welting in. On the reproduction, some of the reproduction grills that you'll get, those holes will not be there. You'll have to drill them yourself. And then we've got all the rivets out from the hood to the grill welting. And I'm ready to flip this over. And I'm going to show you an alternative method to stripping these as opposed to taking it to a sandblaster. So I've got the grill already, and I've purchased a can of clean strip premium paint stripper. It was just a little you know, big box hardware store. 
Now I've tried the other ones. I've tried the ones in the can and I've tried the you know, dads and the other strippies. It doesn't seem to work as well as this clean strip does. And I've heard of Aviator Aircraft Stripper works really well as well. What I want to show you here is let's say, let's say you're doing a project and you're doing it out in the backyard. You don't have a sandblaster. You don't really have the financial means to pay somebody to sandblast your Jeep. You can have some really great success with just some simple elbow grease and, and cheap products like this. Now, wear your gloves. I'm outside, it's a well ventilated area. And all I'm gonna do is follow the product's instructions, shake the can up. <laughs> it's the fun part. And I'm gonna give this grill a nice coat. I've got paper on the ground, it'll make it really easy for me to clean up the mess and I'm working over a drop cloth. Say, Scott, that's a lot of work. Well, it, it is. Here again, we're trying to show you that you can achieve really, really quality success without all the big garage parts. Believe me, I'd love to just take this to the sandblasters and have them shoot it out and be bare metal. I'm stripping it first because there's a lot of paint layers on this and there are some bends and some creases I've seen in this grill. And I might, might want to find some damage or maybe where somebody put some Bondo, that kind of thing. Because I want to do my repairs before I prime it. I want to be able to see everything. Looks like it's already starting to work. This one can will go quite a long way. I think I paid six dollars for it. I'm working underneath a, a tent because the sun is coming out now and I don't want to get sunburned. <laughs> Also, I don't want the sun's rays directly getting on this as it, as it kind of eats away at the paint because that is a, the sun has a tendency to dry it up quick before it's done its work. We'll let that sit about five minutes and we'll come back to it with a scraper. That's only been about two minutes. You can already see multiple layers of that paint coming off there. Look at it bubble. That's just awesome. Give it a few more minutes and we'll start scraping. And now we get to do the fun part. I just got a simple painter's paint scraper. You can get those anywhere, USA, paint store, big box shop, whatever. I'm just gonna take this, watch that. And I've only had this stripper sitting on here for about five minutes. And go through, I'm not pressing hard. And off it comes. In a lot of spots, it's taking it right down to the bare metal as you can see. And there's probably a good four or five coats of paint on this grill. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape most of this on this video. Just bear with me, I just wanna show you how little effort it takes. And see, that's nice too, you got that little round edge there. That took it right down past the primer. Careful not to get this stuff in your eyes, on your skin. Read the back of the can before you use it. It's gonna tell you what to do if you do do those things. You get this on your skin, it will burn you. But I'm just dropping the shavings onto that white paper that I've got below, and it'll harden up. The paint will harden back up, and I just wrap that up and dispose of it properly. Got 80% of the paint off just in that pass. And keep at it for a few minutes. But it works. Now the back side is going to be a little bit more difficult because a lot more little nooks and crannies and areas that are hard to get a scraper in. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a soak in too. That front took me all of 10 minutes to get, like I say, 80, 90% clean. And after the stripper does its job, you can always go back in with your wire wheels and your hand sandpaper and get it really cleaned up nice. The little cracks and areas that are tight like to really give them a good soaking because it'll take off, like I say, right down to the bare metal. Keep shaking the can as you go.
this is set for a minute and go ahead and start scraping on that see that paint just it just comes right off and these little areas down here they're kind of hard to get at but you can do it this five-in-one tool is fantastic absolutely works perfect get into the all the inside little nooks and crannies so I'll work at that for a while and get as best I can so I've scraped the grill all up and I took it out to the water hose and I washed it all off with soap and water I've still got some little chunks of debris on here but I've neutralized that stripper and what I'm going to do next is I'm using some various tools and some sandpaper to clean this off I've got a pretty inexpensive wire wheel and when you're using that you want to be really careful of those wire shrouds coming out at you so I wear a full face mask and of course a respirator because this has got you know lead probably paint in it and I've got some old school um, assorted sandpaper some emery cloth and it goes right from 80 right up to 320 and I'll get into this a little bit by hand and then we'll clean this up as best we can I think you'll be impressed So I've got the front side pretty much done, and I found a couple things. This particular slat rail right here has got a wicked twist in it. This one's got a wicked twist in it. This corner, as I showed you when we first started, it's pretty beat up and banged up, but we'll probably be able to dolly that out. I've got a dent here. But you see that wire wheel's got that pretty much cleaned up but on the bare metal, and I'm gonna have to go back and do some handwork, but I will do that after we fix these things. I'm gonna flip it over and grind the paint off what's left on the other side. So I've been hand sanding on this grill a little bit and I've got it about 90% the way I want it now. And I noticed there's a big crease right here in the side of this where this would go into the near the radiator. And I'm gonna try to get that out of there. And how I'm gonna do that is at first, I'm gonna see if I can't just grab that with my fingers and get it close. Just roll it maybe a little bit. And that's not going to work so what I'm going to do is I've got a dolly set it's an automotive dolly and a body hammer and I'm going to try to get as much of that crease out as I can I'm going to start here at the top of the crease now, I'm not really hitting it hard but I am hitting it square you see it's already starting to come out of there this metal is not very thick and it gets bent and damaged really easily. See, it's coming out. I miss there. And I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of hammering square on that crease, and you see, it's starting to come back out. Got yeah, a little top there. I can't get a little too hard on the hammer. No professional body man, that's for sure, but it can do a little dolly in. That's not a problem. Come back. I don't know if you can see that with that camera that took a majority of that crease out of there. It may, may, may seem silly, but you will see that when you open up the hood on the side, or you open up the hood of your Jeep, you will see it. Then I've got these rails here where the staples went through. They're all kind of bent up. I'll show you this little quick trip, trick on how to get those straight as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next part when we'll be priming and painting the grill. And if you like the series that we're doing, we're restoring a 1943 Willis MB. And subscribe to us on Team G503 on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Keep it safe and happy jeeping.